Do not let a tampon discourage you, but also understand that tampons are not for everyone. If you personally don't like them, you don't have to use them and that is totally fine. It's Sharon. I am finally making one of the most requested videos I have ever gotten in my whole entire YouTube career. So basically, I have been asked a lot to make a video of how to put in a tampon. So if you guys would like to see more videos like this with like period tips, tricks, hacks, give us a thumbs up and let me know in the comments below. I have a whole playlist on my channel literally called All About Periods where I already have some videos on tips, tricks, hacks, and even more. So if you want to go check that out, definitely feel free to. And if you'd like to be in my videos, have a say in them or even be shout out of the day, make sure to follow my Instagram, my Twitter, and my TikTok and of course subscribe for more if you want to see more. Now this in particular is a video on how to put in a tampon because I know they seem very intimidating and they seem very scary and there's so many tampon horror stories out there which are also some videos I've made. Just understand that they really are not that bad. Do not let a tampon scare you. You scare the tampon. So that being said I'm going to give a little bit of a rundown on tampons. Basically how a tampon works, how many sizes, how many different types, how to insert it, how to take it out and other little tips and tricks like that. So go grab your snacks, go grab your tea, go grab a little notebook and go grab your tampons and let's get into this. So the first thing I want to talk to you about is the different types of tampons. This is like usually my go-to tampon. This is extendable because it's like this and it extends. So this is an extendable tampon. You have others that this might just be a stick itself. So that's just considered really just a plastic applicator. And this is a plastic applicator too, but this is a plastic extendable applicator. So it doesn't matter if it's extendable or not because this little part right here, this little stick that's through the string is what pushes the tampon inside of you. You may also have one that's cardboard applicator. So this instead of being plastic, it's just cardboard. And then you also have a tampon that is just the tampon. There is no applicator. So there's nothing wrong with this, but I don't recommend using just those tampons, like, you know, without any applicator when it's your first time trying to use a tampon, just because it might be a little bit tricky, might be a little bit more difficult. But if you're using tampons and you're used to tampons, then yeah, you can use those. It'll be a lot easier. Now there are also different shapes for your tampons. I do like the ones that their string has a braid. It's like a leak guard braid. This is to help catch some blood in case you start leaking. Those are usually on the little wing winged tampons that when they expand and get liquid in them, your period blood, they kind of look like little wings. There's also just like the regular cylinder shaped ones, which is this. Some may have some fluid lock grooves and also have two little strings as well. Some may have a leak guard skirt to help, you know, prevent leaking. Lots of different options. And there's also lots of different size options. One brand in particular, Tampax, offers five different sizes. They offer light, regular, super, super plus, and ultra. The normal average sizes you'll see are regular, super, and super plus. So honestly, it really depends which brand you actually to buy but make sure you're also doing your research and buy one that's like friendly for you that you're not allergic to anything in it tampons for the most part are made up of mostly cotton and rayon but there's also a hundred percent organic tampons that are just made out of cotton so there's a lot of options of different types of tampons to buy is basically what i want to say so that being said i do recommend buying a variety pack the reason i say that is because your period isn't consistent you're not going to have a heavy flow the entire time you might have a heavy flow for two or three days you might have a lighter flow for two or three days you know the flow varies so if you have a variety pack you have some regular you have some super in there and you have some super plus in there. So you have some for the really heavy days and some for the not so heavy days. So it's always nice to be able to switch it up. Now the parts of the tampon, this like I mentioned is the plastic applicator and inside is the cotton of course. And this right here is the string. So those are basically all the parts you really need to know. This if I'm not mistaken is called the barrel which is the part that actually holds the tampon itself and the little stick to push is called the plunger. Also most applicators usually have a grip. This grip is like right here. So this is where I would put my fingers. I use my thumb and my index finger. Some some people use their thumb and their middle finger. It just feels more natural for me to use my thumb and my index finger, kind of like I'm pinching like a pencil almost. And the grip is right here. And if you don't have a grip on yours, what I would say is to hold and place your fingers the closest to where the barrel, the part that's holding the actual tampon ends. So it would be like right there. Now, before we actually get into inserting it, I do want to explain first that you have three holes in your bottom half of your body. So the first hole is your urethra. That is where your pee comes out of. Your second hole is your vagina, which is where your period blood comes out of and your third hole is your rectum which is your butt where poop comes out of your pee hole is physically too small to fit a tampon inside it is basically impossible even the smallest tampon will not fit in your pee hole so you don't worry about sticking it in the wrong hole the only other wrong hole you can stick it in is your butt but it is very easy to tell that you are sticking it in your butt because one you feel that it's your butt two it is a lot tighter and a lot drier so that being said when it comes to inserting your tampon and you're inserting 
inserting it into your vagina hole because that is where the blood comes out of. You may have to spread your lips and that's totally fine. Your hole isn't going to be a gaping hole either. I'm not saying you have to search for it like it's some hidden treasure, but I'm also saying that it's not going to be the most obvious thing in the world either. So spraying your lips, totally fine and totally normal and totally expected. But before you do so, make sure that you wash your hands. That is the most important step before inserting a tampon because you do not want to stick any bacteria downstairs near your vagina. So always wash your hands. Now there are several positions you can do when inserting a tampon. I always just sit on the toilet, so that's obviously the first position. But if you're first getting used to it or first trying out, you can stand by the toilet with one leg on the seat or you can even squat over the toilet. So you have your knees angled and you're literally squatting over the toilet but not entirely sitting on it. Now if you're sitting on the toilet, insert your tampon at an angle. You're not going just directly up. You're not going directly to the side. I'd say at a 45 degree angle. So when you're sitting, kind of aim it like towards your back, especially like your lower back. Instead of inserting this way or this way, you're kind of inserting this way. And make sure to point it up, not down, because if you're pointing it down, you're pointing at the toilet, not your vagina. Now if you feel like you're hitting a wall while you're inserting your tampon, you're more than likely hitting your vaginal wall. So honestly, just angle it differently and try again. So how this works is you are going to insert the barrel of the applicator entirely into your vagina. So that is this part, the part that is holding and covering the actual tampon itself. So how I know I'm doing this is, since I have my two fingers on the grip, I'm going to insert this into my vagina to the point where my fingers are touching my vagina. Not the hole itself, but the actual outer layers. When my fingers are touching skin. So I'm going to insert it basically this much. This is when the only part of the applicator that you see are your fingers holding it right at the grip and the little plunger part. Now that you've inserted the tampon, you have to take off the plastic applicator. So you do so by simply pushing the plunger, which is the little part that you're holding on the grip. You just push that and your tampon will come out. Push it all the way back until you cannot push the plunger anymore. This is pretty much going to be to the point where your fingers are because your fingers are at the base of the tampon. When you can't push anymore, this means that the tampon is out of the applicator. So now you simply just pull off the plastic part by grabbing the little end of it and just pull it away. While you are pulling it out, make sure you are not grabbing onto the string because if you're grabbing onto the string, then you are just pretty much pulling out the tampon that you just inserted into yourself. So make sure you're only pulling out the cardboard or the plastic part, of course. Now, the biggest mistake I want to say is to only insert the tip. If you are not inserting this completely inside your vagina, it will hurt and it will be very uncomfortable because the tampon is not fully inside your vagina. So don't be afraid to stick all of this inside your vagina. That's how it's meant to be. That's how it does work. If you leave it out and you see some of your tampon still peeking and you can still actually see some of the cotton, just simply use your finger to push it back up. And don't be scared about your tampon like disappearing inside your body because it cannot get lost inside your body. Your vagina has almost like a bit of an end, has like a bit of a wall, kind of like um like a sock or something. Like, you know, it has like a little little vagina wall. So it won't get lost in your body and travel up your stomach or something, you know? I do want to mention this is probably the biggest reason why you might hear my tampon fell out horror stories. It's because the tampon just probably wasn't inserted correctly to begin with. So make sure the entire tampon body is actually inside you. And if not, just push it in. As long as you leave the string out, do not put the string inside your vagina too. The string is how you get it out. So leave that out. Now with the string, I've gotten stories of someone pulled my tampon string because they thought it was a loose string and then my tampon fell out. So how to avoid this is simply by tucking this string and you can tuck it in the lips of your vagina, which is your labia. So by doing that, your string isn't just hanging out and about, it is tucked in. And also when you pee, some pee could get on the string. So tucking it in is definitely a great option. If you are a heavy bleeder or you have a long day or you just want to give yourself peace of mind, I definitely recommend wearing a pad or a panty liner just in case you may leak or you're scared of leaking. Obviously, don't wear one of these if you're going to go swimming because, spoiler alert, if you put a pad or a panty liner in the water, it's just going to absorb that water and suddenly it looks like you're wearing a gigantic water-filled diaper. So only do that if you're not going in water. Now for knowing how long to wear the tampon is wear it as long as you need to, but no more than eight hours. I know I need to change my tampon when I start seeing blood on the string, when I start seeing blood in my underwear on the pad or the panty liner, or when I start seeing blood when I wipe. That's when I know, hey, I should probably change my tampon because it's getting kind of bloody and full. A good way to know it is time to change your tampon is you give it a light pull and if you feel it slipping out easily, then yeah, it's a sign to change it. But if it's a little difficult to pull out and you can tell that it feels kind of dry and a little bit hard, then leave it in for a bit longer because it's not time to change it yet. It's still dry. But if you really want to take the tampon out and it hurts a little bit and it's still a little bit dry, I recommend doing it slowly and also take a breath and calm yourself down and relax because if you start to get anxious or nervous, your vagina muscles can actually tighten, making it more difficult to get it out. So just take a breather, just relax and do it slowly. You will be just fine. Now, ideally your tampon lasts about four to 
to six hours. If you remove it after six hours and there's still a lot of white showing, like a lot of the cotton actually showing and it felt a little uncomfortable and dry while removing, then you should go down a size. If you remove it after four hours and it's full and even like overflowing and you're leaking, then you should go up a size. This is a lot of trial and error and just really getting to know your period flow and which tampon size goes better with your flow and when it goes best with your flow. I personally recommend starting with a regular and going from there. I'd also recommend using a tampon when you're actually bleeding and there's a lot of blood. If you're just spotting and you're bleeding a little bit here and there, which is spotting, don't use a tampon. You're not wet enough down there and it will be uncomfortable. Instead, use like a panty liner, for example, or a very thin pad. That being said, do not practice putting in a tampon if you are not bleeding. It will be painful. If you want to practice putting in a tampon, you can do so with the applicator itself. Just mess around on how to insert it. You can try doing like one hand. You can learn how to do it with two hands. And once you take the tampon out, you can always like put it back in and just practice more and more, you know? If you want to practice with like a teddy bear, go for it. A water bottle, go for it. Just as long as it's not on your actual dry vagina, then you're in the clear. But it is really not that difficult of a process, I promise you. But also if it takes you more than one time, understand that that's normal too. It took me like four to five tries to finally learn how to put in a tampon and now I do it in seconds. So you will get there if you keep trying. Now, like I mentioned, don't wear a tampon longer than eight hours. Simply just follow the label on your box and simply follow your flow. If you're going to sleep for the night, wear a pad instead, like an overnight pad with wings. You can nap in a tampon just as long as that nap is no more than eight hours. If you leave a tampon in too long, it could lead to toxic shock syndrome, which is TSS, which is a bacterial infection that could potentially be life-threatening. If you had a tampon in for longer than eight hours and you start to feel nauseous, you're vomiting, you have a fever, you're confused, you notice a rash, even a sore throat, call or go to your doctor or just go straight to the ER because you do not want to risk it. Now, when it comes to taking out your tampon, you just simply pull on the string. It really is that easy and that is why it is really important to leave your string out. Do not cut it, do not stick it in. You need that string to get your tampon out. If you notice that it's hurting a bit, you either just leave it in and wait until it's wetter and full of more blood or you slowly take it out like I mentioned. Just remember, breathe, relax, and slowly take it out. Tampons do get easier and do get better and less awkward over time, I promise you. You just gotta keep at it, you just gotta relax, and you just gotta keep trying. But also, tampons are not for everyone and that is totally okay too. You also have so many options including pads, reusable pads, menstrual cups, menstrual disc, period underwear, a lot of those being wallet and environmentally friendly. Just remember, don't let a tampon scare you. You scared the tampon. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope this really helped you out. If you did, give us a thumbs up and let me know in the comments below. If you have any more questions, tips, or any special video requests that you would like to see from me, also make sure to comment that down as well. I do have a lot of videos on my All About Periods playlist, whether it's like your horror stories or tips, tricks, and advice. I also have a series where I've been trying out different menstrual products. I've tried reusable pads and I've tried a menstrual cup as well, so definitely go check those out. I also have a lot of school period hacks too, so lots of bingeable content on this channel. Now, shout out of the day goes to Jill on Instagram. Thank you so, so much. If you'd like to be shout out of the day, just follow me on my Instagram and stay active. I just want to reiterate this one more time. Do not let a tampon discourage you, but also understand that tampons are not for everyone. If you personally don't like them, you don't have to use them and that is totally fine. But also if you would like to use them and they scare you, don't be scared. It's a learning experience. It really truly is, but you will be mastering it before you know it. So don't give up, sis. I believe in you. But of course, if you'd like to see more videos, definitely subscribe for more. And all that being said, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.